Hey everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. I have had some requests to do a video based around my okonomiyaki, which is a Japanese cabbage pancake. I make this very regularly and I make it on our what we eat in a week all the time, as well as on my food prep because it's something that, that we do make really often. Uh, it's something that I very much enjoy and I have adapted from the recipes that I found to be super simple. So what a lot of requests for you know a bit more of a in-depth way of how we make it so what I did was I made it for lunch or breakfast this morning and I recorded the whole process took a little bit of extra footage and then I've got my notes here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break it down and let you and describe exactly how I make it so that you guys can uh, attempt it at home a lot of people have and everyone raves about it so hopefully uh, those who've been a bit hesitant because I didn't give very good instructions because that's really not my thing uh, then this will help and you can uh, give it a go as well so uh, we'll get into it and if you have any questions please ask in the comments alrighty so I buy cabbages in bulk whenever I can from in my six weekly supply run so generally speaking I can buy them all year round they're just not real cheap at some points of the year but even when they're expensive I find that then they're, they're still well worth buying because of the fact the fact that they last so long so we buy drumhead cabbages generally speaking we did buy some wombok this uh, run. The wombok does not last anywhere near as well as the drumhead. I think because it doesn't seal up as tightly. Uh, so we found that it was going moldy in the middle of the cabbage. Not like not just the outer leaves, but the actual middle of the cabbage was going moldy and we had to discard a bunch of it. We bought five of each and I think we only used two of the womboks before they started going bad. The drumhead cabbage, however, lasts us really, really well so we tend to buy them because of that so all I have to do is like so this cabbage here is one that I have had for five and a half weeks now uh, because I came back on from the grocery trip with this cabbage so as you can see the outside leaves got a little bit icky a little bit uh, discolored and funny texture but all you have to do is peel off those outer leaves uh, as far as you need to which is only about four or five leaves I find before you hit what looks like a perfectly fresh cabbage and once you hit that point uh, you treat it like normal so I cut it in half cut the core out and then I slice it up really nice and fine I like my cabbage really nice and fine for this dish because I like the cabbage to be well cooked in the in the pancakes I prefer crunchy cabbage and things like coleslaw and stuff like that but in this okonomiyaki or this cabbage pancake I much prefer it to be uh, thin enough that it gets sort of wilted within the the pancake so I try and get it really nice and soft sorry really nice and fine so that it goes nice and soft uh, so I just cut it up with a knife and I cut it up as fine as I can it doesn't really matter and it's totally personal preference you could dice it up if that's what you wanted but I tend to like to try and shred it up nicely so that it has the the fine threads of it I did take a little clip here of the sound of it being cut purposely so that you could see how fresh this cabbage sounds even after sitting on my bench for five and a half weeks uh, now I did buy them fresh they would have been pretty fresh when I bought them because I buy them by like you know from out of the cold room but still so here's this little clip of the sound of the cabbage I thought that was kind of neat So once I slice all the cabbage up, I stick it in a great big bowl. So I have this really big stainless steel bowl. I find that you want to go for a bowl that's larger than you think it's going to be because uh, you want enough room to, to really coat the cabbage well. And to do that, you want enough space that you can sort of turn it over without it spilling out everywhere. Now, if you're doing a smaller amount, so I'm going to put a disclaimer here too, that what I the amount that I did here was about half a large cabbage, which ended up being about two kilos of cabbage. I weighed it up so that I could give you some ratios. So it ends up being about two kilos of shredded cabbage uh, and I ended up with 24 
pancakes at the end of this so this is obviously going to be able to be reduced and being that it was about two kilos of cabbage 24 pancakes it's going to be nice and easy to reduce so i'm going to put the details in the uh description of the video of what i did and then you can work on it from there but start with a bowl bigger than you need I add soy sauce, it's about a tablespoon of soy sauce. Uh, and then I started with two cups of flour, which is about 300 grams and coated all the cabbage. Uh, I use my hands for all of this dish because I find that a bit like sauerkraut and things like that, you wanna be able to crunch the cabbage a little bit to, to, for it to release some of its water. Uh, you can salt it a little bit if you wanna use salt, but the soy sauce has a fair bit of salt. Uh, you can add some onion powder or fresh onions or green onions. You can use shredded other shredded vegetables in here as well, shredded carrots, uh, anything like that I stuck with plain cabbage because we have this cabbage to use so that's why we've been sticking to plain cabbage but you can use any sort of other shredded vegetable you want in there bean sprouts shredded carrots I've used radishes all sorts of things and uh, you can add any sort of flavorings you want at this point too a lot of the uh, recipes have some Japanese seasonings and stuff we've ended up just going with the soy sauce because it's simple I then add six eggs to it. So these eggs are whisked together so that they're all fairly amalgamated and coat all of the flour coated cabbage. Again, I'm using my hands. And what I wanna do is I want all that flour coated cabbage to be coated with egg as well. You can add everything in all at once and mix it, but I do find that you get some dry spots and some wet spots. And I find by doing it in this, this sort of order, especially in the size that I'm making, maybe if it wasn't such a large quantity, it wouldn't be such an issue. But for what I'm making, I find that it's a whole lot easier if you coat it all with flour I then coat it all with egg and then move forward. I added some water. I started with one cup of water or about 250 grams of water uh, and I mixed it through again. Again, using my hand, squeezing the cabbage a little bit and making sure that everything's coated really well. From this point forward, you then have to adjust according to your preference. I did keep track of what I put in and I'm gonna give those ingredients in the comments if you wanna stick with what I'm doing. But there is different different textures of this dish that you can make. So I put the 250 grams of water through, I then added another cup of flour, which is about 150 grams of flour, mixed it through and then test the squeezability of it. You want, you want it to hold together because you want it to cook into a pancake on the plate. Uh, but you have the differentiation there where you can either have it as a cabbage pancake with a little bit of batter or a, bit of, or a fair bit of batter with a little bit of cabbage. So like, it's a vegetable pancake, but you could do it fritter like if you want. Like if I'm making, you know, leftover meat fritters and stuff, there's a fair bit of batter there with the fillings. This isn't like that for us. You can make it that way though. So that depends on how much batter you want to cook up. So if you've got wet batter with a bit of cabbage, you can end up more like a pancake texture. Whereas this is just a cabbage texture with that, the held together with the batter ingredients really hard to explain which is partly why I don't share this kind of stuff because it, it makes it hard but hopefully that made sense so after I put that other cup of flour in I actually added another half a cup of water about 125 grams of water and after that I decided on one last cup of flour which is 150 grams so in the end I ended up with with uh, four cups of flour about 600 grams of flour with about 375 grams of water added through uh, and then worked it through evenly testing the way it holds together when I squeezed it so I wanted to make sure that it would hold together to a degree into a nice sort of a sticky batter where if I squeezed it into a ball and that was where I was happy with it so those quantities was where it was exactly how I wanted it to be but as I said you can make it wetter uh, it means that when you pour the when you put it in the pan you want to make sure you're collecting some of that batter with the with the cabbage as well because the batter will sink to the bottom a bit so you want to make sure you're mixing it up as you do it too uh, I like to use lard on my pan because I like the texture of the pancake to be crispy on the edges. Uh, I want those outer bits of cabbage to have that sort of crispy uh, braised cabbage sort of a, a thing. Uh, but again, you don't have to use a fat in the pan. Uh, a tiny spray of oil helps with it not sticking in like you would do with pancakes. But uh, you don't really have to add anything at all. And it might cast iron season so well that I could get away with nothing. But I like the bit of lard in there because it crisps up the edges, which you'll see when we flip it over. Uh, I tend to use a half cup measure and I put it in the pan and spread it out a little bit because I like them to be thinner. But again, you can have them thicker if that's how you wanted. You just want to make sure you're cooking it all the way through the middle. But I like them sort of more surface area to get crispy on the outside. That's how I prefer them. 
I have my pan up quite high because I said I like the crispy so I want it to go really crispy on the outside pieces but nice and soft in the middle uh, so I have my pans up quite high but you could have them lower if you wanted especially if you don't want as much color on the cabbage on the outside as I've got on mine uh, it's personal preference there uh, the cast iron holds heat really well too of course so it crisps up really well whereas some pans aren't going to crisp up as well I left the camera going here so that I could check the timing of how long it took for it to cook through. So it took around about two, two and a half minutes per side on medium high to high heat uh, with half cup measures spread into those four discs on that pan. Uh, so it sort of, yeah, the two, two and a half minutes each side got me that crispy external, soft inside. It was cooked all the way through. There was no gooey bits in the middle or anything like that. And it had the texture that I like. But again, that has to be personal preference. You could probably bake these even if you wanted to, if you wanted to make them in bulk. Uh, the batter is thick enough that it's not going to spread. So if you, if you put little circles of this on a baking tray and put it in the oven, it would probably bake. I haven't tried that, but it probably would. But you wouldn't get the crispy bits that I really like. So, you know, that's, it has to be, as I said, it has to depend on how you want it, what texture you'd like it, and how you want to serve it and things like that. It is very similar to corn fritters. Uh, my corn fritters or my zucchini fritters are, always have a lot of vegetable with not a whole lot of batter, uh, but they do need more batter than the cabbage ones. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a hard one when I remove them from the pan I like to put them on a rack rather than directly on the plate that way they're keeping that crispiness rather than going soft uh, but as I said personal preference there I like the crispy edges so I like to put them on a rack so they keep that like I do with my fried chickens and things like that uh, but you can just put them directly on a plate or a board or serving plate or however you want they're just going to go soft on the side that's sitting on the on that flat surface because they're not going to breathe so they're going to sweat there's always some little crunchy bits left in the pan when I do them, so I, as the cook, <laughs> claim them and snack on them while I'm cooking the rest because I like those crunchy bits. Crunchy fried cabbage, I really enjoy that. Uh, so I like the crunchy bits on the, that have been left in the pan. I like my okonomiyaki to have those crunchy bits as well, but yeah, personal preference. And then I repeat the process. Sometimes I use two pans at a time, get them done faster. It really just depends on who's waiting for food and who's not. Uh, Daryl was in town this morning, so I didn't wasn't in that much of a rush because he wasn't going to eat till he got back anyway. So I just did work in the kitchen while I was getting them done. I also pulled some chicken out of the freezer. So this was previously marinated and cooked chicken thigh. Uh, we like to have meat as a topping. You don't have to. We have had them plenty of times with nothing on top, but we do like to have a bit of meat. So this is only like a four or 500 gram pack of cooked chicken that we heat up in the cast iron pan and then have between the eight of us. It's just a little bit of a topping on top of the pancakes. Definitely not the meal. It just it, we just like the texture and taste of having that meat with the pancakes as well. So I cooked all that up so that we could have that with them. And then I just kept on going as needed, doing batch after batch after batch. So as I said, this made 24 uh, pancakes up, which isn't a bad number for us. It leaves us with a few leftovers, but not too many, uh, generally speaking. Though you can never tell because sometimes the kids don't want them and, you know, that's just the way it is but generally speaking because there is eight of us that's only three each uh, the little ones definitely don't eat three but they quite often eat two and sometimes Daryl and I might eat four it really just depends on which meal it's for and whether we've eaten before or anything like that or what time of day it is and stuff but they refrigerate perfectly well they eat fine from cold or you can just heat them back up in a fry pan and they come up and taste like fresh so having excess isn't a bad thing in that sense uh, I made up some QB style mayonnaise. Now I did it the same way I do normal mayo. I use an immersion blender to make my mayo. The only real difference between my standard mayo and QP is that QP doesn't really have anything sweet added to it as such. Uh, like normally I'd add cowboy candy brine or some fermented garlic and honey or something to the other one. Uh, but this I use rice wine vinegar instead of lemon juice because it's done with the vinegar generally speaking. I used uh, duck eggs, duck egg yolks as well. Uh, normally you'd use a dashi powder or an umami style flavored powder of some sort because your kewpie mayo is more of a savory mayo than a sweet mayo. Uh, I don't have anything like that at the moment but what I do have is the mushroom salt that I made. So it is uh, dehydrated mushrooms with uh, some chili flakes and some salt and some 
uh, thyme and things like that. So it's quite an umami flavored salt. And so I used that in place of salt and the dashi powder type stuff in the mayo. And then you normally use mustard as well. I don't have any made up mustard in my fridge at the moment. So I just use some ground up mustard seeds, which works perfectly fine. And then oil. Now I have, we've, as I said in the previous video, we've actually run out of olive oil. So I had to get Daryl to buy a bottle from a town just to get us through this week of mayo and stuff. And I spent far more than I would like. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we do have plenty of other oils, but we don't like any of them in mayo. So uh, we had to use, we had to get that if we wanted to make mayo. So then I just blended it up with the immersion blender like I normally do. Drizzle the oil in. Once there's a decent amount of oil, I can put a bit more oil in and emulsify it like that. Uh, and then we use that as the Kewpie mayo. The way we like to serve them is on a plate with some chicken pieces cut up over the top. So I cut the chicken up smaller again because that way you know we're just having a sprinkling of like shredded chicken over the pancakes uh and then drizzle it with a bit of the kewpie style mayo it's very yellow uh for anyone who's wondering because i use the duck egg yolks and they're large and quite bright colored uh, and then some ketchup manis. So traditionally, I believe it's served with tonkatsu sauce, but uh, we did buy it at one point and I did make it at one point and we just found it was an unnecessary step for us. The ke ketchup manis works quite well, the ABC sweet soy sauce, uh, as an alternative. And because we use it for, in a variety of things, we always have it in the cupboard. So I am actually going to try making the ketchup manis from scratch too. Someone sent me a, Christine, I think sent me a link to a recipe to make it so we are going to give that a go at some point but in the meantime I always buy a couple of bottles we always have a couple of bottles on hand because I use it for a variety of things really nice on fried rice <laughs> uh, so it works perfectly fine uh, and the tonkatsu sauce really just it was okay, but it didn't really bring anything extra to it. So we're happy to use the ketchup manis. Uh, you could use anything you wanted though. Uh, they are just a fairly neutral flavor they are cabbage pancakes and they they don't have a huge amount of flavor on their own if but if you like cabbage then they're quite tasty on their own so you know there's there's that uh some of us like a little more mayo than others me being the one who likes quite a bit of mayo and some don't like mayo at all so every person gets it served however they want some have mayo some don't i think everyone has the ketchup manis with it but um yeah not everyone has mayo and i think everyone has it with chicken but i don't quote me on that. I do let them serve themselves from like the bench. So, you know, they come and bring a plate, put a okonomiyaki on their plate, and then they add chicken, add mayo, add ketchup manis, however they want sort of thing, or I assist them with that. So as I said, it made 24 half cup size pancakes. Uh, and that is quite a good number for us, being that there is eight of us. Uh, it's probably a much larger recipe than most people want to make. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to put the ratios in the comments of what I used and how much I used to make this batch. And then it's actually worked out fairly evenly numbered to make it easy to reduce I reckon but it is very uh, adaptable too because as I've said all the way through the video it really depends on how you like it like how what consistency you want your batter to be and uh, how you want it cooked and what size you want the pancakes and things like that there is a lot of variability there but I also think it would freeze quite well as well so if you made a big batch I reckon they would freeze up nicely and fry up we wouldn't do it because it takes up freezer room unnecessarily but I think it would be doable. We have made these from our pickled coleslaw off the shelf as well, and that works perfectly fine. So when we couldn't get any cabbages in the middle of summer, you can't really get cabbages. Uh, they're more of a cold weather crop than we, or they were like $4 each or something. So we didn't buy any. I did use some of my canned pickled coleslaw. So I make the pickled coleslaw. I think I've got a video on it. It, it the recipe is variable, uh, but it is quite sweet. If you follow the recipe, we don't add anywhere near as much sugar as in the recipe. So it's nowhere near as sugared, uh, but the texture does stay pretty crunchy. So when you drain it, you drain off the brine of it, the sweet brine of it. And then we mix it up like normal. Obviously we adapted the liquid quantity a little bit because it's already soaked up all its liquid already let off its water. You don't need as much water and when you're making it, so you're going to have to adapt it a little bit. 
but the pickled coleslaw worked perfectly fine and tasted quite nice so that is an option as well though the amount of cabbage that's in a jar of our pickled coleslaw isn't huge so it took a couple of jars to make a batch of okonomiyaki which is not particularly efficient use of pickled ca- of the pickled coleslaw uh, we tend to use that more in summer over like we have flatbreads make flatbreads with fresh grilled meat and the pickled coleslaw and stuff when we don't have in that point of year where it's too hot for lettuce and, and spinach to come out of the garden anymore yeah, but it's and it's too hot for cabbages and things like that then the pickled coleslaw makes a really good crunchy fresh tasting salad type thing to add to things so we used a lot then uh but anyway that was the okonomiyaki so i hope that answered everyone's questions who wanted me to make the video uh, that was you know detailing it in in full uh and that everyone wants to give it a try and everyone should let me know how they go and if everyone enjoys it and yeah so there you go thanks guys